All right. Thank you so much, Tara. Uh, really happy to be here, everyone, with you today and discussing Pen Pastel. Um, it's a real versatile material. It's a uh, pastel, but also lends itself really well to mixed media techniques. So we're going to go into a kind of a general overview of what this product can do in the process. As you have you seen through looking at your materials, we'll we'll use it to mix a color wheel. And then we'll take an opportunity to go through some of these acrylic uh, products that can be used as grounds for pastel and for pan pastel. I am a materials and application specialist here at Golden Artist Colors. Uh, that means I'm a uh, basically a uh, an artist assistant to all you out there in the painting community. So if you're in your studio and you have questions about your materials, about golden products, about pan pastel, really about anything, and you're having a challenge, just give us a call up here or email us, uh, help at goldenpaints.com, or you can use our 800-959-6543 number, ask for technical support, and they'll get you through to myself or someone on my team. We have uh, five of us over here who are uh, you know, ready to assist you whenever you're in need. Um, I totally encourage you to simply explore as we go. We're going to go through this kind of systematically, but if you start to get antsy and you're feeling it and you start to get a sense for these products, then then please just get right in there and have a good time with it. That's what we're here to do. And please put your questions in the chat. Tara's going to pick up the ones that seem kind of uh, in line with, with what she can answer. And then uh, ones that she think are more universal that that might be beneficial to others, she'll post or she'll just speak right up and 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 break in and we'll take it from there. Before we jump into the product, we just wanted to show a real quick um, overview of the factory and where the pan pastel is made. Just kind of a fun little uh, view of pan pastel in production. So let's take a look at that real quick. So this is our upstate factory. We're in central New York coming in that front door. Pan pastels just kind of making their way down that line and 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 zipping through all these little pieces of machinery, finding their way into those uh, those trays and boxed up and sent out to the stores to uh, to meet you in your studio. Real quick, but we thought it's kind of cool because it does um, give you a sense for the 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 creative mechanisms that uh, that went into play to to create these. Um, to create these products and to develop these and design these products. So um, I think with that, I'm gonna transition now to the overhead camera and we'll do a little bit of an unboxing of these materials and um, take a look at what we got to, to work with today. So we're gonna build something like this over here, uh, this color wheel by mixing with the set that was provided um, through Plaza. This is the set. I took the plastic sleeve off of here because I just wanted to make sure that everything uh, came apart easily. You have a nice little um, uh, thing there. I don't really know what that is. It's just a little wrapper. And then you have your lid on top, but these are all stacked up. Hopefully you've taken this apart and sort of experimented, explored a little bit before we've gotten started. Your pan pastel is exposed there and each of these pans are just screwed into the bottom of the or the the bottom of the the, the pan uh, on top, right? So you can see how beautiful, smooth, and and pure that color looks right there. Here's our primary, the red, yellow, blue. We have a titanium white and a black. And then in the very bottom of this, you have that shallow dish there, and in that dish you have the sponges. These are the soft tools that are used to apply the pan pastel onto your painting surface. Um, the the uh, sponges are kind of like a micro pore sponge, very similar to makeup sponges, but the pores are a little smaller and they do have a special formulation to them that kind of help them pick up the pastel. So the, the inventors of this, uh, Bernie and Ladd, really just worked hard to get just the right porosity here so that it would work well for the, for the stuff. Um, Inside of here, you also have what we call like a mini applicator. This is sort of uh, for finer detail. And then you have these little units right here. Now, these are kind of funny in this context because they really belong to these um, 
they really belong to these handled tools right here. And they kind of go on and off the, the handled tools like that. Um, these can be a little difficult to get on. So I just kind of actually just uh, lick that a little bit. You get it wet and it kind of slips on there pretty easy, right? And they have different shapes. So let me show you those real quick. So there's an oval, this, this kind of triangular unit, and then the, um, then the, I don't know what we'd call that, maybe a filbert, okay? So these are made to replicate the effects of brushes in some ways. You know, this is kind of like, almost like a finger, uh, but it also could be like a filbert. So we have these smaller sponges available as well. These come in little packs. You have this triangle, right? And you can get some nice detail on these edges. You can work the corners of this thing and get some nice fine lines. This guy's all about sort of making those kind of sharp pointed strokes. Those sponges, the soft tool sponges are available. I suspect Tara in, uh, you'll, have a, you'll have sort of a lineup of those over at Plaza as well. If you wanna make some big strokes, okay. these are, yep, yep. So absolutely available over at Plaza. You have these big wedges. These things are awesome for making huge strokes of color. Um, they, they're not in this particular set, but they, they are really beneficial if you wanted to do a massive background or something, very fast application. Um, this is a little bit of a different setup than what you have for that um, drawing that you, that you were just talking about. But in here, there's, uh, there's like a big wedge sponge and a, and a, and a handled um, sponge as well. Pan pastels do come in those stacked sets like we just looked at and like we just unboxed, but they also are available in these kind of like flat tray setups. And these are really great because even if you, if, even if you buy them individually or you uh, get a stack set, you can buy these trays on their own. And then you can set up your own palette as you, as you see fit to match the, uh, your desired uh, color palette. And they come with this lid. And so you can have them in here. You can use your sponges, just go for it all over the place, having a great time. And then when you're done for the day, it's as simple as just kind of putting that lid back on there and putting them away. These come in 10 set, or you can also get um, these big old 20 set. You'll notice when you go through your product guide that the, all the color palettes are uh, organized in sets of four. There's a mass tone, which is the, 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 um, the pure hue. Then you have a tint. This is essentially a pure hue mixed with uh, titanium white. And then for each color, you have a shade and an extra dark. All right, so that's kind of the way that you'll see how that palette is organized. So next time you're over at uh, Plaza, check that all out. It's very, um, it's very beautiful product that, that can be uh, used on its own, used in conjunction with other pastels. And um, I think you'll find that they're really um, helpful materials to, to have in the studio. So I'm just gonna kind of keep these guys close at hand. And let's, um, let's take out your color, color wheel. And I'm just gonna set this one to the side here because we're gonna make our own right now. I have a bunch of extras because I was, I was playing around practicing beforehand. And maybe some of you already jumped into this to, uh, to try these out. But if you haven't, let's get started together um, so that we can make this, uh, make this uh, color wheel come to life. This is one of the unique features of Pan Pastel is that it's really a mixable color, which is nice in pastel. Of course, we all know that pastels can be mixed together with stumps or you can use your finger to really get in there and mix soft pastels together. That's one of the beauties of this of the of the pastel product. But this one is kind of nice because it applies a nice thin layer that doesn't overburden the surface too quickly. And you can get your mixtures on there and then you can work other stuff on top if you so desire. So let's start with yellow because it's um, it's the lightest value and it's going to be the most easygoing um, color on this um, color wheel. Take the sponge, use the, uh, the flat side that's not, doesn't have that little seam running down it. You'll notice there's a little seam uh, on here. You can't really see it on camera, but you'll notice in person. Use the opposite side or the, or, the, or the adjacent side to that. And we'll try one, two, three strokes on the pan and then go right into the, that yellow section there and fill that in. 
and then fill that pie slice in and then go all the way over using your most dense application uh, next to that pie slice. And as you empty out the sponge, just kind of make your way all the way over to blue green toward the blue side, because we need that yellow to get that color. But you just want to have a nice light application there. And if you get it around the edge, don't worry. We're going to come in with the eraser here in a little bit. We'll tidy that right up. It'll look great. It's one of the features that you have here is this um, pan pastel is very easily erased. All right. So we're going to then we're going to head over toward red and do the same thing. Just kind of lay that yellow in there, allowing the sponge to empty out as you head over toward the red orange slice. Um, if you find that you're getting a, a, a sort of an excess of powder in here, you might be pulling too hard, making too many strokes. You'll see that that's developing a little bit of a powder build up there. Sometimes you could just grab that up in the sponge. It's not a big deal. It's not wasted product, but really um, three strokes is all you need to maximize the, um, the amount of product there. So bam, once you get that, Let's do something. I want to show you because we, we talked about um, some of your things that you needed to have in order to prepare for this event. Paper towels is critical. You need to have the paper towels on hand because this is the way you clean off your sponge. I don't necessarily have to clean that off right now because I can just use another quadrant of the sponge to uh, get my color on there, but I'm going to anyhow just to show you what happens. I can take that pan pastel and I could just kind of work the sponge across the paper towel like that and I can get it cleaned off. It still will be stained, but I can go into some of these other colors and you'll, you'll notice that it doesn't really um, make that, have that much of an influence on the mixture when it's just uh, wiped clean like that. that even, even with that though, let's turn this over and use a clean section. We'll move the yellow off to the side and go to blue next because blue's pretty, uh, it's kind of second in line in terms of easy going when it comes to the, um, the amount of strength that it has and what it's going to bring to Finally. the Are you on over there, Tara? Everything good? Okay. Yeah, everything okay. is great over I, here. I, we put, just so everybody knows, um, and Greg was talking about the tools and the empty trays. We did put those links into the chat and we'll do that as Greg mentions other, other products. So if you, um, uh, most of, these will be linkable and findable from the email blasts that have been going out um, since those are highlighting pan pastel at the, towards the bottom of the email. Products are also on the supply list, but if anything that you know we didn't bring up before, I'll be we'll be putting links in the chat as well. Awesome, that's great because I'm definitely going to be mentioning some stuff here, so that'll be perfect. So we'll we'll get we'll have you scrambling to uh, to get it put put up. Sorry, maybe we didn't uh, throw get... it at me. I got it. I got it. You got it. You're ready to go. That's that's perfect. Okay. So as you go over, so now we're we got the blue. We filled our little quadrant over to the red violet. As I come over that yellow, I can be a little heavy handed on that blue green because that's pretty strong toward blue. But as I head toward yellow green, just let it up a little bit and start to feel how kind of gently you can kind of apply the pan pastel. Now this is. This is what's cool about this. I can just be real mellow about kind of mixing that in. And at first you'll see that the strokes of the, uh, of the tool will kind of make themselves known. You'll see that it's being applied by a squarish shaped unit. But as you kind of work that surface, you'll see that it starts to sort of blend it in a little bit and it becomes super mellow. I'm gonna go back to yellow there just for a second, just to kind of find a little bit of a lighter value closer to that yellow scene. Because that's that's what I want, just something that's barely, barely, barely green. Okay, so I'm I'm happy with that for now. That's going to be a good little step, and I'm just going to touch that to the blue surface. Come back in and see if I can make a nice gradient over here to my blue. And if you're having a hard time out there, uh, put it in the put it put your questions in the chat if this isn't sort of like going as smoothly as you thought it might. Because I want to hear what you're. Whoops, I just put that in the wrong spot. I want to hear what you're going through but I think this is kind of neat. Notice that we're just painting pastels on a piece of uh, printer paper. That's, that's, a, that's a little different. Most pastels, you know, you can, you can put pastels on, on, on nearly anything, but this, I'm getting a nice comprehensive coating here on this um, printer paper, and that's kind of sweet, you know? Not that you 
not that you're going to be working your pastels always on on a flat piece of paper like this but for sketching or doing different stuff like that it can be a nice uh nice option so i'm going to clean my sponge off again just so i don't get it all over my hands and all over the place and remove this paper towel i like to cut my paper towels up into smaller pieces just because you can go through paper towels really fast if you got a full sheet there so that can be problematic now i'm going to come in with my red and then i'm going to use a fresh piece of the sponge and then I'm gonna put my red on there. I'm gonna turn that toward me. I hope you guys don't mind that. And then I'm just gonna kind of put that in there like this to get fresh and pure red. Use the corner of the sponge just to work those, that edge. And the red is really strong. I love the red because it's like, bam. Once you put it on there, it's, 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 um, it's really intense. I'm actually a little nervous right now. I don't wanna overdo this. So I'm gonna come in real light handed on the blue. I'm gonna go a little heavier on this kind of red violet section. And then I'm gonna go in to violet, real mellow, and then the blue violet. I'm just barely dragging this thing. I mean, I'm letting the sponge do the work. I'm, I'm, I'm not putting much pressure on there at all. And I'm just gonna to come together with that. Push on that a little bit. And then I'll just go backwards, see if I can get this in a nice balanced gradient. Kind of cool, kind of fun, you know? And this is a thing you could have in your studio. And if nothing else, it's a reminder. Oh yeah, let, let me blend with my pan pastels. So you have a little gradient there. What do you think, uh, Tara? Is that looking like the one you made over at, uh, when you're at your event there? Getting you all jazzed up with your... It does, it lo it's looking great. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I got too excited and didn't finish my color wheel during the event, but... <laughs> oh, you just jump, jumped into I other I wish stuff. I had, but no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, it what I realized after just playing with this for a minute, I think, is what is I got so excited to, um, you know, folks, I don't know if you saw it, but the Clementine that was in the email um, was the was what I did at the workshop, 100 percent using this set. And I was just really excited to make something, um, it, you know, just using the primaries. And to be able to create shadow and light and and so the fact that I could do that with these um, and and the tools included in the set was was so much fun. I love the Clementine. Yeah, I had to zoom in to check that out. I was oh, glad thank you, you. That you had done that during that during that event. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, you were very inspiring. So, um, so here we have it. I'm going to come back with a little yellow at this point again. I'm just going to kind of make this orange a little stronger just to get it a little more intense and hopefully this is working out for everybody who's who's playing along um oh nice colleen get a little close up on that and you just kind of keep working that surface and it can really um it can really develop the color and in some ways, that's kind of what happens as you continue working this, this product around the color wheel. You can kind of go back and forth, you know, a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, and then you're kind of working that product into that surface, and it develops as you go. So I encourage you to kind of keep working on this as we're talking. Uh, you know, we're going to go through a bunch of different stuff. So uh, if, you, if you start zoning out, go here. Play with this some more, and I think you'll find it's it, it'll be a gratifying um, a final product. Around the edge, I'm just going to take this. These kind of white vinyl type erasers work really well with the product. Other a number of different things work work with the um, pan pastel. You know, these kind of like rubbery sort of ones um, work great, but these white ones I think are quite good, and especially on a on a sort of a smooth paper. So let me just. Let me just do that for a second and I'll go around the perimeter and just tidy this up. Now, when you're in the middle of a pastel drawing or painting and you start to erase something, it can be a little unnerving to have all these kind of like um, erase your um, pieces kind of just floating around in there. So you'll have to sort of develop a relationship with the erasing technique. It's nice to be able to get back down to the surface, but then you're faced with this kind of like difficulty here. I'll, I'll just grab a brush, you know, 
I'll just grab a whatever brush and I'll use that to kind of tidy up. Of course, you oh, look at that. Sorry. You can, get, you know, give it a little, little uh, air or something like that. And, and, and then you could tidy it up and then kind of keep coming in and working that surface. So that's, whoops. So that's kind of um, the color wheel as we, as we uh, just worked it real gentle and, and uh, easy. And um, keep giving that a try and seeing what you get with this beautiful primary set. And we'll just kind of now just go down the line. I think I really wanted to show some of the versatility of the pan pastel on like uh, a, a smooth paper like this because it is uh, so unique. So I thought, I'd bring out a sketchbook and we just would kind of play on that sketchbook for a second. For most applications, you could just kind of come in, you know, you could do your sketches in here. This is a, a really smooth paper. If you had your landscape, right, you have your sort of your space here. I always go to the mountain right in the middle of the composition, you know, like uh, difficult. Uh, Difficult to get me away from there. You're supposed to have some some sort of uh, different variation there. But if I wanted to come in with this, I could really work that surface with the pan pastel in my sketchbook. So if you wanted to make quick portraits, you wanted to do quick landscapes, you could notice that the dust is very minimal here. One, two strokes. I'm coming in, and I could put that up there. And one of the nice things about this is once I work that into the surface there, almost to tint the paper, I can blow off any extra. And really that pastel kind of stays put in a lot of cases, you know, when you really work it to that surface. If it built up a little bit, you could use a fixative or something, and then you'd be good to have that living in your sketchbook, no problem. All right, you could also utilize these kind of like these little sort of waxy uh, page dividers or these silicone page dividers. I don't I honestly wax paper that you'd get at the grocery store. Tara, I have no idea what these even are or how you. Well, they're glassine sheets. Glassine so, sheets, perfect. Yeah. Yes. So you know, hit up Plaza and say, "Hey, I need some glassine sheets. What do you got?" I wanted to show you this thing. Look at this. It's a stamp, right? So this 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 is just a uh, like a store bought. Um, rubber stamp and this is like a a, 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 a sticky um, versa mark type of water stamping pad it's like a glycerol glycerin type of uh, material i believe and then i'm going to put this on here and sort of wet that stamp you could use a line of cut for this you could use all kinds of handmade stuff for this and then i'm just going to come in i'm going to put that on that page there whoops i doubled that one up and then um, if I come on top of that with my pastel, I can get some really kind of fun, instantaneous, very gratifying effects with that type of tool. And then I could come in over top and I could race stuff out, leave some sort of partial color, leave some of that very dense dark color, and I could have a, a pretty neat looking thing there. And then I could work that with with mixed media or pencils and things, and come in with um, with my new with my new marks to kind of get to where I need to be to finish that piece. Okay, beautiful. Um, and then one more thing here that I wanted to show you. I love working uh, the pan pastel up with a little oil. What was that stamp again? It's a, it's a basically, it's like, it's just happens to be glued down to this piece of um, plastic block here, but it's like a rubber um, stamp. It's flexible. And this could be something that you make on a lino cut or whatever, but um, it's, it's like a crafting stamp, essentially. And you could use that on ink pads or whatever, but in this case, we're using it on that, um, on that sticky um, glycerin pad. And we put that down and it's kind of like an oil, oil based, uh, um, mineral oil based thing, maybe. Craig, is it, is it an embossing pad? An embossing pad. There's a, there's a particular pad that's used, um, 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's called, oh, it, well, actually, it might be something, this, oh, this is an embossing. I no, don't no, think, no, I meant the stamp pad itself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't think this is hard enough to do embossing um, unless you wet your paper or something. But this is like a watermark stamp pad is how they describe this. So okay. you could. I think, I think that's the same as an embossing pad, which is used with embossing powder. It's the clear pads, and then you put embossing powder on it, and it. But it they're sticky oh, like that, it. so I think that that is the same as as embossing as an embossing pad for those who who um, can't find that particular one. That's great. Yeah, that's great. I think that that's um, that's going to be a fun conversation. You know, just uh, keep the keep the uh, uh, keep the questions alive, and then when you're in your plaza store, you go and ask them uh, and and about the video and look for that embossing pad. Uh, this is uh, oil pastel. And what I love is that the oil pastel goes onto this surface and not unlike the sort of the tacky nature of the um, embossing pad, it's sort of there. And then as you kind of um, work the pan pastel over the top of it, it starts to become a, you know, kind of visual very strong visual element because the pan pastel will just lock right onto that tacky, sticky surface of the um, of the uh, oil pastel, right? Which is killer. And then if you wanted to do something with uh, like a colored oil pastel, you could um, then use the colors in combination with one another to kind of create a optical mixing. So here the red and the green are kind of mixing together to create this really, really nice looking brown color, um, which could utilize, you could utilize in your, um, in your studio practice. So that's really fun. The pan pastel, just like any pastel is really dependent on the texture of the paper that you're using. So it's something to keep in mind. You know, there's a lot of options for papers out there. Um, the, um, the stores uh, plaza has all kinds of options. And I just wanted to sort of put that in your mind that the paper type, whoops, the paper type really makes a difference. So here we have a couple varieties of paper. Then I'm just going to kind of run the pan pastel uh, sponge right over top. And I'm going to use like this big wedge right here and just show you how different the pan pastel is on these different surfaces. So I have it loaded up with blue. Here's like a sanded paper. Look at how dense that is. Pastel paper. This is a um, mineral paper, uh, Yupo, a Duralar. So you get a, a, a huge range. Like these pastel papers, really, the textured surfaces really hold the pan pastel. And you could build it up in different ways, but you have these very smooth non-porous surfaces that Tara, you must have all kinds of varieties of these non-porous papers and stuff that uh, then- For sure, yeah, we have Yupo in, in several styles. We've got Duralar, we've got, you know, un, you know even Clearlay, which- Okay, um, might like a vellum? Some interesting, so so Allie's getting ready to, to post all these links in the chat for these. You're keeping us on our toes. Uh, <laughs> no i love it and i love that you kept all this from me when we talked about the event because i'm like it's, even more ooze and ahs over here that i didn't have exactly before. see so it's it's all about the energy you know you have to keep the energy alive tara and that's what we're doing here today we're just kind of like showcasing these things and keeping everybody pumped up about new and exciting stuff so i'm just using different pencils different products over the top of these uh, different papers, right? So I can use these different things in different ways, but the pan pastel, as you can see, it's the one that kind of gives you this beautiful coverage and this big comprehensive um, coating over the surface. So different papers, definitely try them out with the pan pastel. I think they can offer a lot of variety in the studio. Um, and uh, give you some real dynamic effects for your for your work. All right, and then 
you know, papers is one thing, but then you also have a whole variety of stuff when it comes to um, working with with pastels. You know, um, when you when you consider bringing acrylics into the situation, acrylic surfaces. So this is just a variety of different acrylic paints. Um, and then I have a, a, a acrylic product over top here that we'll talk about in a second. I'll use a uh, one of these tools here. Okay. And if I have, for example, this was in the, this was in the bottom of the, the kit. If I had a brush like this, I could take that brush and I could put that on there like this. Huh. And you can kind of just get that on there. And you could use something like that, right? If you wanted to try out one of these sponges. So let's try that. When you have acrylic, when you have acrylic that's kind of glossy, you can get pan pastel on there, but it doesn't really do a heck of a lot. But when you come over here and you have, you know, you start to have a little less gloss, these are matte surfaces. Let me just kind of turn this up for a second. You could see the gloss of that blue, right? The sheen that's there, the sheen that's there. As we start to move toward the right here, it becomes less glossy. So as you have less gloss and more matte, you start to see that the pan pastel is really grabbing hold of that surface. This is a more of a matte acrylic. Uh, this is, I think, um, a so flat. So you can see that that really starts to take hold. This is like our so flat acrylic right here. You could start to see so flat right there, the red oxide. That's this one over in the corner. And these are our flat matte acrylic products. And the, uh, the pan pastel does really well over the surface. This is just titanium white fluid. You know, not you can put it on there. It's just not that dynamic, right? But let's say you made a painting on a, uh, a piece of paper in acrylic and you wanted to uh, accentuate that uh, acrylic painting with some pan pastel. You could use something like the uh, pastel ground which we have an example of on our um, on a, one of our boards, and you could take that and you could put that on the surface. That's what this is right here. So you could still see the acrylic product on there pretty well, and then the um, pastel ground really kind of gives you a. Well, let me do this. Really nice kind of grab. All right. So everybody out there, you're a pastelist. You know what this is all about. When you got that extra um, tooth, when you got that extra grab on the surface, that's when the pastel starts to really do its work and, and grab hold. So you can see where the, where the um, pastel ground is, it's really starting to knock out the, uh, the colors really grabbing hold and looking amazing, all right? So we're gonna look at some of these, um, so we're gonna look at some of these grounds that we, we sent you, uh, the ones that Tara was talking about and, and just kind of like, um, Test them out with some different techniques. And Greg, I just want to say that, you know, when you, you look at the pastel ground or the watercolor ground, you know, I mean, the basic what comes to mind is applying that to whatever just alternative surface you want to use, not putting down acrylic and then using pastel ground on top of that, because of course it dries clear. Yep. Like it's just it's just another one of these, you know, amazing tips that I just wouldn't have thought of. So that's awesome. exactly. So what if you wanted to what if you wanted to work on some panels, you know, and, and you know, you, you didn't feel like gluing a piece of pastel paper to that surface somehow. You could put something like black gesso pastel ground onto a rigid surface and really develop a nice dynamic um, um, surface for your. This is a rigid panel with micaceous iron oxide in it, right? So you got these great surfaces. This is plexiglass with pastel ground. Yeah, so it's the alternative surface that really comes into play here. What if you wanted to make a four by eight sheet of plywood with, with pastel on it? These grounds really come in handy because you can utilize them to make massive pieces that are, that are totally awesome and great for pastel. Let's do a stencil right here. If I was, if I was, um, you know, if I were gonna try to do this stencil, I could just kind of come in here. I'm gonna use the blue on this black gesso. Black gesso works great for uh, pan pastel. For some reason, it just grabs the pastel beautifully 
And when we we started testing this stuff out, now we've only been making pan pastel up here in Golden Artist Colors for probably about a year, maybe a little, little less. So we're all still very excited and learning about all the wonderful options that this stuff has. And it's and it's a it's a it's essentially it's a mixed media tool. So we're super pumped about it. You can get these kind of like effects like that that are pretty excellent and would work into a um, into a piece beautifully. If I if I had a you know if I wanted to do like a, a, a loose mask with the pan pastel, I could do something like I could tear a piece of paper. Like I love I, I love doing um, you know simple kind of um, masks with with like um, like a piece of paper like this. So what if I came in here and I um, utilize that to create this? almost uh, misty landscape. And I could sort of change the, I could change the look of it. It sort of changed the uh, positioning of the mask. As you kind of come forward, I could use another piece of the mask for like a foreground element. Hey, Greg, real quick, is that a crafter's workshop stencil you were using? Is that what? A crafter's workshop stencil. Uh, crafter's workshop. TCW. Uh, yeah, I think they are TCW. Okay, we... okay. Um, Allie will put a, somebody asked where you got the stencil. Allie will put a link to the crafter's workshop stencils. It looked like one of theirs. I think we have that one. So um, Allie okay. will put a link to those. Yeah, Check we have that. that one for sure. This one's super cool. So I we're, love that one. I used it on a birdhouse, actually. It came out great. <laughs> did it, did, yeah, the birds were probably just completely. <laughs> just it's just so confusing. But look at that. Like like it's it's so great, right? You're sort of halfway there already. You just kind of set it right up with this uh, TCW stencil right here. So this other one might be TCW as well. I think we had a lot of those in house. Um, really cool. Yeah. So anyhow, you got these kind of really uh, fun uh, dynamic options when it comes to um, using the pan pastel. Absorbent ground is, um, is a great product for just kind of setting up a nice bright white surface for the pastel ground. This stuff comes in big jugs. It's like gesso. It's very uh, leveling. You can brush it on. And, you know, you usually use it to dilute this a little bit, maybe like 20% with water, and it helps it to level out a little bit. But you can put that on the surface and you get this nice bright white. And we've actually taken this to become our primary testing surface for pan pastel because it creates such a beautiful, um, rich surface. So I just wanted to do like a really quick, and, and I totally... Um, um, encourage you to do something like what Tara did, where you kind of create like a, a, make an apple, make a, make a mountain scene, make a landscape. In this case, because I'm just kind of trying to keep it simple, I'm just going to take and, and tint with the white and I'm just going to tint and I'm going to shade this. I'm going to shade this out just so to remind the, the group that you can take this uh, pan pastel and now I'm just kind of trying to give it a little lighter touch as I make my way up to the top there because I wanted to take it from that red, that rich saturated red to that little bit more uh, pinky kind of color. So you can mix right there on the surface. Now I'm going to do it with the dark and I'm just going to be real light handed because that dark is intense. I'm just going to go in I'm going to mess up my red pad there. Look at that black coming in there. I just want to... Sorry, Greg, real quick. Yeah. Um, the... Nancy is curious, thought this was a good question for everybody. How is absorbent ground different from white gesso? It has a lot more solids in it. So it's all about the um, it's all about the tooth and the type of solid that's in there. It really will draw in stains or or washes really quite readily. So let's say you wanted to do a uh, pan pastel piece on the absorbent ground, but you wanted to establish some acrylic color on there first. You could easily come in with a um, a wash of color over that surface, stain it, 
and then work your pan pastel over top. It's really meant for, um, it's meant for um, making washes or doing um, watercolor, things of that nature, okay? Um, so I'm getting a little bit of dust buildup on there. If I do that, you can either work it into the, into the situation or you can um, just knock it out. And what I'm gonna do is if, if you find that your pan pastels get kind of muddy, because you've been cross pollinating with your sponge, I'll just take that and I'll just I'll just kind of wipe that off a little bit, and I'll knock that clean, and then I'm back to super fresh. All right. But yeah, the absorbent ground's amazing. You can tint it too. This is a tinted version with uh with a little bit of a I don't exactly know like a like a Naples yellow hue or something. And so you just take and you put like five percent color in there, ten percent color, and you can get some really great. Um, you know, effects to start the piece with a nice base for your, for your, for your pastel paintings. We already talked about pastel ground slightly, but um, I just want to go over a, um, a little bit of the, the characteristics of the pan pastel utilizing this surface. This is a kind of like a, a, a grayish translucent uh, product that like we saw with the, with the earlier panel can be utilized on top of other products there and i'm just going to do some you know kind of some stuff over the surface and this is fun uh to do with the pan pastel with the sponges you can kind of get that texture in there you can see the brush strokes with pan pastel though if i wanted to i can really get in there pretty easily and i could fill those up if i wanted to make a nice dense application if I were utilizing a, a normal, let me let me not be let me not be unfair to the yellow here. There, just for a second, I got to get him in there. Him, her. I'm sorry. Let's have it like that, right? So I got those. I got these beautiful colors. If I wanted to put sort of like a, a nice uh, pastel in here, this is a Sennelier pastel, which um, Plaza carries these um, a, a line of Sennelier pastels. These are amazing, really beautiful, soft pastels. Um, but if I wanted to fill, I'd have to really kind of work that surface and get in there and you could see how much dust it begins to, to create here. All right. I could work this over top. You could see the texture of the brush stroke there with the, uh, with the pan pastel. I can, I could sort of work it in to those grooves a little bit easier with something like this. I, I get a, a bit more dust. All right. So that's kind of one of the differences here. If you're, if you're in a studio situation and you want to keep the dust low, the pan pastel can be a real benefit in that regard. All right. But I can use all kinds of different products over top of this. I can use my pastel sticks or my, my um, colored sticks, colored pencil sticks. All right. I could do some drawing on top of that. I could use my, uh, you know, here's like a Rembrandt pastel. Right. I'm coming over top. When I started uh, painting, I was a pastel painter first, and I loved my Rembrandts, my Sennelier's. They were great. It was, it, was, it was way before pan pastel came around, right? So I could fill that right in there if I wanted to. But I could also come over top with, with the pan pastel, and that blends in a little bit to some extent, but I can come over top with the pan pastel also. So use these surfaces and... Um, Play with them a little bit, see what kind of uh, paintings you can do on these and determine if they would be helpful in the studio. There, here's an example of, of um, the pastel ground on top of a plexi support. So this is plexiglass. You can kind of see the translucency there. You see my hand underneath. And this is plexi, this is pastel ground on plexiglass, but the pastel ground is mixed 50-50 with the uh, color pouring medium matte. And then maybe diluted with a little water. And that creates a, a mixture that you can knife over the surface, let, let it smooth out, and it'll level out beautifully to this nice fine surface. Just wanted to share that with you. We love the, um, the um, putting the, the color pouring medium matte into the, um, into the different products to sort of help with leveling. This is the micaceous iron oxide. You could see this is an iridescent color. You can see sort of that shimmer that exists on that surface. 
That's a beautiful thing. And it's got that amazing, almost like rough texture um, of uh, sandpaper in it. And this is great for the pan pastels, you know, like coming over top with the, uh, with the sky, working it in there. This is all pan pastel that's already on here. So we're looking at pan pastel. We've looked it over some of the grounds. Let's take a look at what happens when you take uh, colors and you work it over the surface. I'm just gonna take a little cobalt blue here. This is a fluid, fluid cobalt blue. So you got that nice sort of fluid consistency. And we'll just take this and here, I'll dab it right here so you can sort of see what happens. And I could work this up into the sky. Where'd my big old brush go here? I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna let that down a little bit with some water. And then if I wanted to, I could kind of work that into the sky. You could see though that on the perimeter of this, it's gonna, it's gonna really create a difference. So you're gonna, you can work that in there. And this particular color seems to go on pretty nicely, but you will find that some colors with, uh, uh, in the acrylic world aren't entirely happy when they go over top of um, the pastels. So for example, if we go back to this, um, piece that we just did. If I just put some water on there, we're watching a ball of water just kind of like roll across that surface. See that? It's kind of cool actually. And then when it hits the, uh, the, the raw paper, it's sort of stuck down and it's soaked in. That powder can really resist the water sometimes. So you can either do like a, um, a little wetting aid this is a terrible uh, plug for wetting aid, but this is wetting aid with water. It's one part wetting aid to 32 parts water. That's our recommended uh, ratio. You basically, you modify water with the wetting aid. Forgot to grab a bottle of that before we started. But if I use that to modify my acrylic, you can see that that just sort of soaks right in there very beautifully. And It's a little hazy that I think, but yeah, so you can kind of see what that is. You can also use like a um, isopropyl alcohol. You can modify your water with isopropyl alcohol. And that also helps with the, um, with the, the paints going into the surface. So I'll just use pure isopropyl. You can kind of see that it just kind of wets that out beautifully, you know? And then you can kind of come in if you wanted to sort of blend and sort of do stuff like that. You could take the isopropyl and you could use it for that purpose. Isopropyl does make things get a little sort of like wacky and it gets a little squirrely and it can kind of wiggle around a little bit much. So we recommend kind of making a blend with the isopropyl and regular water just to kind of mellow it down a touch. But you could see how nicely that worked. And one of the benefits of the isopropyl is it does evaporate off really quickly. So it's not going to warp the paper as much as just straight water would. So pan pastel over acrylics, no problem. You saw a bunch of different examples of that. Acrylics over pan pastel, it can have its issues. For the most part, it can be quite fine, like you saw with that cobalt blue. But if it needs it, you can put a little wetting aid into your water, or you can use a little isopropyl alcohol to kind of take it to that next level. Just wanted what about to show you oils, Greg, because that just came up in the chat. What what about painting oils with it? Yeah. All right. Should so we're about don't work with or adjacent to oil paints. Well, we, let's do I'm gonna do like a watercolor thing and then we're gonna jump right into showing it with oil. So oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. to come. All right. And then so someone else just wants to know the ratio of the wedding aid or the re, the ratio of the rubbing alcohol. The this rubbing alcohol start it start at like 25% rubbing alcohol to to water. Okay, and that's um, and that's something that we can help you out with if you call up or whatever. But also the wetting aid, it's it's on the directions, but um, it's about a one to thirty two ratio. So one ounce to thirty two ounces. Get yourself a quart of water, uh, pour an ounce of the wetting aid in there, uh, stir that up, and mark it on your on your container what you got there, and um, you'll be set. You can totally. Um, Use that for all different types of wetting. If you're having beading up on surfaces with your acrylics, use that wetting aid uh, mixture. Fiber paste, bam, look at that. Fiber paste, this is kind of like a, like almost like a cold press ground, but you could see, let me just close, let me close off the lighting here a little bit. 
There you go, Tara. Sir, fiber paste, get get that link up. Um, Ali's coming with it. So Ali's coming with it. It's so cool. <laughs> and so it's amazing, right? Look at how like textured that is. So we have this beautiful, almost mountain scene that was kind of built into the texture. And then all we did was drag the pan pastel right over that surface. And it gave us this really cool look. Likewise, crackle paste, you can come over and do like all kinds of cool stuff with crackle paste and get this great look. Bam, look at that. I mean, it's amazing. And it goes into those little cracks and then you can kind of work some acrylics over top and you can have a really fun surface. So keep that in mind when you're playing with your papers, you know, when you're making uh, dirt paint made out of dirt and GAC 100, you can have a great time, so much fun. And just right there in the safety of your own home. Let's look at watercolor real quick. So this is um, this is absorbent ground that I put some um, like a like a burnt orange watercolor over, and then over top of that, once it was dry, I put some um, um, ultramarine blue. What I love about working with the pan pastels over the watercolor, especially over that absorbent ground, is when I come in here, and if I wanted to try to draw out the picture a little bit, I could just take a paper towel here. I, you know, here I'm just using normal paper towel. I can come in here and start to drag out color and get down to the white of my ground with straight up water because this watercolor is, you know, it's, 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 it's reactivating, it's ready to go. And then I can um, build my composition up like that and get this stuff looking great. I'm just gonna dry that off a little bit. So that can be a really fun way to kind of build an image. And then, sorry, I keep using the blue here, but we're kind of limited options here, you know? Um, and then I can come in and kind of work that surface with the pan pastel and fill in some of these other areas. Kind of come in and make a nice blue sky up there. All right, so this is absorbent ground, which you have the example of, and then watercolor over top. This is some sort of an acrylic marker, I think I did watercolor over top of all that. And then I'm pulled the watercolor out back down to the white of the absorbent ground. And then I'm working my pan pastels over top. And the absorbent ground's still doing a pretty good job holding that pan pastel. So I'm happy with that. I think that could be really fun and, and be a neat way to work a project. All right. And then of course, if you, um, if you wanted to work watercolor back over top of this, you absolutely could. Same thing if you have your ox gall or your synthetic ox gall, if you're not getting the right wetting. Um, then you could come back over top with the um, with the watercolors on top of the pen pastel. This is this is all done in that way. Like we we went back and forth with this landscape, and we just kind of like put color in there, put um, pen pastel, put more watercolor, and it, it started to develop this kind of really interesting uh, space. Go ahead. Is there a question, Tara, that um, popped up there? Yeah, well, someone's asking about fixing, so I said you were going to address that. But then Nancy also asked, why would you work pan pastel in versus just using watercolor? Why would I do it? Only in that the pan pastel has a sort of a light, airy quality to it. And it wouldn't even have to just be pan pastel. You know, like I could come in with any number of other pastel things and, you know, kind of flesh out this, this image. I don't know. There's just a, there's just a different vis visceral quality to uh, the pastels versus the watercolor. Also, with watercolor, you're you're tending to, you know, kind of display under glass anyhow. So it becomes this kind of nice symbiotic relationship. You already have a piece that you're going to be putting under glass, so then you can kind of put the pan pastel on there too if you wanted to, to do it. This is just a mixed media extravaganza we're just looking at different ways to kind of mix these medias together finally oil painting with pan pastel now this i'm an oil painter okay so this is kind of my favorite thing i love this i have uh these are oil oil paper uh type surfaces you could do canvas whatever that's pre-gessoed and has has the proper ground on it to take the the pastels but these surfaces tend to do pretty good so this started out as a kind of an oil sketch. And then I let the oil dry a little bit on the surface and worked the pan pastel uh, over top. 
One of the interesting features about this is this is all pan pastel up through here, this clouds and whatnot. It doesn't create dust. The, the, the oil from the paint kind of comes up and locks the pastel down. So it sort of builds into the surface and, and remains dust free. Here's another version um, that kind of plays a similar game. Like this stuff, I have pastel there, right? But up here where I've added the pastel, it doesn't have the dust. So it sort of locks it down. What you have to do if you wanted to, if you wanted to try to play around with this a little bit is you would get yourself um, the oil paint uh, at a place where, oh, actually this is already pretty setting up pretty good, but it's a little tacky still, you know, it's still kind of wet. This is oil paint up through here. This is actually watercolor down through here. And you could paint oils over watercolor that won't reactivate the watercolor. So if you have the right ground, that's going to protect your substrate, you can do that. Once that oil paint tacks up a little bit, you can come over the surface and then you can kind of like start working that pan pastel on there. In some ways, you'd expect it to get all over the sponge, you know, and sort of like get the sponge all messed up and, and oil painty. But in this case, I, I'm, I'm putting it on there and I can work that right up without getting my sponge all buggered up. If I want to work that blue in there, I wanted to work some red in there. That's a little crazy looking. And that's really cool, Greg, because I don't think there's much that you can mix media with oils, right? At, until exactly. they're completely cured. You know, if they're completely cured, then maybe you could do something afterwards with, with other with other things. But um, exactly, it's really interesting to be able to simultaneously work an oil painting with the pan pastel at the same time. Yeah, this this I put on right before the program. So the surface was pretty absorbent. But yeah, totally. I, I'm, I'm right with you. I think I was blown away when I came back to, we had Don Emerson come here. Don Emerson is a mixed media artist who uses pen pastel quite a lot. And she sort of like, I don't know, kind of nurtured our understanding of the product and walked us through a lot of stuff. It was so great. And one of the things she showed us was working uh, pan pastel up and over like an oil. And um, when I realized that it locked the, the pan pastel down, I was mesmerized and really pumped. Then we went to plain air recently and we we're out at the plain air exhibition and I was doing all my works out there with, um, with pan pastel and oil in conjunction and ended up making some really cool stuff. It was so fun. Now, if I wanted to work my oils back over top, um, it can be a little pasty, right? So if I have a bunch of um, pan pastel on the surface, it might kind of get draggy uh, and 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 kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, kind of not flow into that surface very easily. But if I use a little solvent um, and loosen up my paint with a little solvent, then I can work back over top with the pan pastel, or no, over top of the pan pastel with the oil color. All right, so if you're working over top of the oil color with the pan pastel, let it tack up so that you're not wet, putting it right into wet, wet paint and getting your sponges all messed up. But if you're working over a dusty scene with the pan pastel, come in with a little solvent. You have to wet that pan pastel out a little bit. All right. And that's, and that's worth experimenting with. Test it out on some sample pieces just to make sure it works for you and that you feel very comfortable with it before you, um, before you work it up on your you know, some final artwork that you've already kind of gone into and you're excited about, don't try it there. Try it somewhere that's, uh, you know, that's a sample. So we're always recommending that people test and try things out first before they go all in on their final artwork, okay? And so, hey, a lot of different stuff we talked about here today. And um, I think that it's an exciting product. It's got a lot of potential for using it on its own at straight up pastel, but it's also kind of like, this this very versatile uh, thing that's a chameleon when it comes to uh, working with other products. For fixative, um, you know, pastel is one of those funny things where if you go all in with fixative and you go really heavy over the surface, you can change the look of the pastel. So you just want to think of it as a light coating that you're putting over top that's just kind of holding the stuff in place. Um, we've tested a, a number of different products. Sennelier's oil pastel spray fix works really well.
for pan pastel with the least amount of change, you want to sort of test out different types of densities of spray before uh, you try it on your final artwork. And then there's a Lasco fixative. So uh, Palazzo is bringing in the Lesco. They do currently have the Sennelier. So check in with them to find the products that are going to uh, best suit your your projects. Um, we have a golden varnishes, the archivals that you may have used on some of your products previously. Those are a little binder rich, and they can tend to saturate out the pan pastel a bit much. So um, while it does lock it down pretty effectively, you can change your color and, and sort of make make things a little darker than uh, than you would otherwise expect. Any other questions, Tara? Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> it's you've covered so much. I think maybe everyone's just sort of absorbing all yeah. of and and their their brains are probably spinning just like mine are in terms of how you know what I can do and what I can pull together and what I can play with. Um, and then you know I guess. Karen is asking about, you know, fixing in between layers. It would be the same thing, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Karen. I think that's uh, that's pretty standard. So, for example, if you start to fill in the tooth of the paper, a lot of people will come over top with with a couple light mists of the um, spray fix, kind of lock stuff down a little bit, but also provide a little bit of a tooth for your subsequent layers. So um, that can be a really helpful way to do it, and that way you don't have to come over top with you know, layer after layer, you're sort of locking things as you go. And, uh, and that can be really beneficial. Yeah. yeah. Especially if you're really layering things up and doing a, a true mixed media piece that can save you from the, from the unintended uh, hand smudge. Oh, <laughs> yeah. know, right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes, for sure. Okay. Um, oh, how do you clean the sponges? That's a great name. That great question. Sorry. Oh yeah, totally. Um, you you know you use the uh, use the towels, use the paper towels, and then uh, clean the sponge off as much as you can um, before you take it to the sink. And what what I do is we what we do here is as we keep a a bucket and we just throw all the towel all the sponges that have gotten just way overused. And we'll throw them in there. And once we get a dozen or so, we'll take them to the sink. We'll get some uh, uh, water filled into the bucket. We'll squirt some Dawn in there. And then I'll just be sitting there squeezing these. And it'll be kind of like pulling the color out. And I'll just go through a couple rinse cycles like that. I'll pour all the water out. I'll do it again. I'll pour all the water out. Once that water starts running clear and I've squeezed all my sponges, they, they are good to go. Squeeze out all the water. Let them sit on a clean paper towel and just let them dry fully before you then come back at it and um, use them for for uh, additional layering or application. Um, they will still stay stained to some extent, though, but that staining won't transfer over to your new uh, paint application. Well, I have a question. Since these are basically makeup sponges, can they be clean with, you know, makeup sponge cleaner or does that leave some kind of residue or anything? Uh, sorry about that. Um, so uh, the unknown, I didn't know there was such a thing as a makeup sponge cleaner. We should bring that in and test that. That's an interesting idea. I would imagine yeah, that yeah, they do make it, you know, what what's in it and whether or not it's any different than Dawn, I don't know, but it's like beauty yeah. blenders are the same thing, you know, um, and, um, you know, and they make also, you know, like, like brush cleaner, like beauty brush cleaner, like things that just are more like, they're more like a paint puck, you know, that thing that goes at the bottom of the, of a, jar of like silicone or something that has the yeah. ridges on it yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. using the words but they're um so oh. there's a lot of different tools that in the beauty industry for cleaning brushes and sponges so i yeah it is i'm curious how they would affect you know those tools you, you know because they're the same tools right but i don't know how they interact so yeah get some and then post an, a uh a, a blog post about it <laughs> we'll, we'll put it on yeah we'll put it on the website um great. no great great idea um i think that you should try it 
it's a similar fabric. It's a similar type of material. It's just that the porosity is different. So it's very likely that it could have that impact. The, the pigments are probably a little stronger here and they might be tend to be a little bit more staining than what you would experience through makeup, uh, but could be really similar. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, could, could be. Oh, I was going to say we've tried some um, different brushes and stuff that are like cosmetic brushes. Some of those has worked pretty well, actually. So brushes like normal brushes don't tend to work great with um, pan pastel because the filament doesn't really grab onto the pastel so easily. But some of the makeup brushes that we've tested, just very cursory testing, uh, tended to work pretty well. So give, give those a try and see if they can serve your, serve your purpose. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Through mixed media, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're, we're crossing yeah. line. Cross, yeah. Well, so the next question is, can you use makeup in conjunction <laughs> with pan pastel? We just made a video for pan pastel and we did iter you know, reiterate several times in the video. This is not makeup. Oh, fair. Fair. Yeah. Please don't use it uh, uh, for for makeup. Now, if you had a clean sponge and you wanted to try that for, with your with your typical makeup, then please, by all means, knock yourself out. But um, but this stuff is is not formulated to go onto skin, and it doesn't really it won't function very well on the skin because it does need something to sort of pull it off. Uh, yeah, and some of these pigments are are not meant to have contact with skin, right? Um, what, what did, uh, Michelle Lenore is saying something about, uh, the gallery or do we want to do the gallery and show the, oh yeah, 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 we can. Oh, okay. So Michelle, yeah, the orange was just my example from the event. Um, it's not that we were all creating an orange together. If you, we can do the gallery view now and anything that was created. Yeah. While Greg was was talking, it would be great to to go ahead and share that. That would be really cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. So upper right hand corner, if you're not familiar, just go to view and change that to gallery. Make sure your cameras are on, and then show us sketchbook sketches, anything that you. Oh what! Oh my goodness, Emily. Dang, oh my know? God, Susan. Yes. Oh, amazing. Job. Okay, let's see. But yeah, let's I see. I I just have three people, but all three just showing some knockout stuff. Exactly right. What so cool. Tiffany over here. Oh, Susan, that, I love it. Oh, Wait, Susan's you, doing you like cutouts. Oh, you stuff? used a stand. Was that a little block that you carved? Whoa. Oh, very cool. Got some pears over here. Emily's so nice. This is very cool. But those grounds are amazing, aren't they? I mean, they just take the pastel really, really nicely. Kate, pull that up again. I didn't see it. Kate uh, Silvis, what did you do? Oh, heck yeah. Pull that away from the cameras. Oh, there oh, it is. There, there we it go. Is. There Coming we go. Focus. Yeah, very nice. Love the Damn. depth you got there. That's fantastic. Yes. How cool is that? Thank you so much, you guys, for uh, for doing those images while we were having while we were hanging out. That makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'll post that, right, uh, Tara, to the maybe sort of some of these screenshots. Maybe you can post some of that. Is that how yep. that works? Or? That is how that works. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Very Good cool. Job, Thank you all. We really appreciate you joining us today, Greg. That was amazing. Um, Great. Brought me back to, to Vegas and um, <laughs> my favorite, my favorite, you know, hour and a half of the day. Um, so I. Uh, Great. Well, thank you all for being here. We really appreciate you all and uh, hope to see you again soon. Thanks, Tara. That was really fun, everybody. I really uh, had a great time. So take care and keep in touch. OK, we're over here at uh, Help at Golden Paints and we got our phone number on the product. So so make sure you call and uh, hit us up. OK, we'd love to hear from you. And we'll great. see you soon, Tara. All right. Great. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, everyone. Bye -bye. Take care. All right. Bye bye.